We had a one-year-old and a, he had just turned three and I found out I was pregnant. It, the doctor does the ultrasound and he said, there's your baby and there's the other baby. And it, it was complete shock. And I was very he, excited. She was catatonic. She couldn't, <clears throat> she couldn't do it. He was the opposite because listen to this, he had been praying for twins. Always thought it would be cool. At 21 weeks, I started having contractions. So I went to the hospital. Sure enough, the doctor said, since you're high risk and all the, all the factors, I need you to be on bed rest. Through the course of the pregnancy, I actually ended up being in the hospital seven different times. But they came at 38 weeks. After all of that, uh, they were seven pounds, two ounces, and seven pounds, three ounces at birth. So they were an amazing size, perfectly healthy. And then about eight days after they were born, I started running a fever. So I called the doctor and she said, you're gonna need to go to the ER right away. Finally, the doctor sees me and I was having that intense abdominal pain. So he thought it was an, a, a uterine infection called endometritis. Meanwhile, Ken was in a wedding. And so he, I said, it's okay, just go, go to the wedding, no problem. I'll just stay at the hospital and sleep but I couldn't sleep because I kept hearing this loud screeching noise. It was almost deafening to me. So then I had this horrifying realization that this sound is coming from inside of me. And when I sat up, I'm not exactly sure what happened, but I suddenly could not breathe. There was no breath to be had. So I go and check my phone. I see I've, there's a text message and the text message said, uh, my heart rate is 155 and I'm on, I'm, I can't breathe and I'm on oxygen. So I run to the car and I'm, I'm running red lights to get to Mercy Hospital. For 16 hours from that point, I struggled for every single breath. It was a huge sacrifice just to breathe. She needed me right there touching her because she was having to concentrate to get every breath. So we couldn't even really pray because she, I, she needed me help helping her. That was what was so important about the friends of ours, family, pastors from Bethel. I mean, that that just immediately responded, showed up because I needed someone outside the door pray, or, or inside praying because I really could, I was tending to her, helping her breathe every breath. They ran several tests, and the doctor came to my room and said, "Well, we're pretty sure you're having heart failure." There's a rule of thirds with this type of cardiomyopathy. A third of the women um, pass away or need some kind of serious medical intervention like a heart transplant. A third of the women um, will recover as long as they're on like a pacemaker or medication for the rest of their life. And then a third of the women make a full recovery. So she said, there's your odds, you know? And she said, what you're gonna need to do is you have to rest your heart for three months. She said, it's vitally important that you completely rest your heart. No lifting, um, no housework, which I was like, yes, you know. No, um, you can't take care of your kids. She said, you need someone in, in with you 24 hours a day. So that was some of the hardest news we've ever gotten. And, and it's very important that we do that because otherwise I might not recover. And so people heard and then they started contacting those that were organizing and just started saying, how can I help? Can I bring some food? And yeah, they weren't saying, how can I help? About it. They were just doing it. Yeah. That was what was so important. If somebody said, how can I help? We didn't know what to say because every we needed help yeah, in every way. So people just said, I'm bringing you this. I'm going to fix, oh, you have car problems? I'm going to fix your car. Mm -hmm. You need your lawn mowed? I'm there. Mm -hmm. There were times that I would walk into the kitchen and I'm like, oh, hello, you know, hello, stranger. I, I've never seen you before, but oh, thank you. You brought us three pies and you've been watching my two-year-old for an hour. Wow, thank you. People just gave lavishly and selflessly because I could do nothing in return. February 13th, the day before Valentine's Day, I had an echocardiogram to check the functionality of my heart and it had come back to completely normal. Completely normal in every way. Had everyone not come around us mm -hmm. and supported us, it literally could have meant the difference in her recovering or her heart going back to normal or not. The, all of the community coming around literally, it sounds dramatic, but it, it saved her life. It really did. It did. Sorry.